I'm Cathy from BBC Good Food. Welcome to another live Q&A with myself and today we're going to be joined by Lulu Grimes um, and we're going to be answering all your questions today about cooking one pots. So if you've got any questions for us just drop us a comment below and we'll do our best to answer them within the next half an hour. Um, it's been lovely chatting to you every day and hearing what you've all been cooking so uh, let us know if you've got any cooking related questions in general then um, we'll be happy to answer them. Just going to add Lulu to the conversation. Yay, one pots. <laughs> Hi, Lulu. Hi. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am fine, thank you. I've definitely gone straight into one pot cooking because the washing up is just getting beyond me. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Every time I read a recipe and it says, you need more than one pan. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I know. My, my sink is just constantly piled at the moment. I don't seem to have time to tackle it until the end of the day. <laughs> I know. I know. What, anyway. What cooking? What, one pot in cooking? Um, I've made a couple of curries recently. Um, and also not just one pot cooking, but one one roasting tray. Roasting is, mm. is, is big. So yesterday I had uh cauliflower on one corner of the tray a couple of lamb chops on one corner of the tray and then some carrots and um a couple of baked potatoes so okay. baked potatoes in first and then everything else added in succession yeah. i think that's a really yeah. clever way to cook isn't it just getting your timings right but using one tray to cook all your ingredients it's save so much washing up and hassle i know just pull it in and out the other and i've got one of those oven liners as well you know the ones you can put on the bottom of the tray don't even have to wash the tray up yeah perfect i love my one of those <laughs> um okay so we've got a few questions coming in already uh, <laughs> what are your most commonly used ingredients in a one pot Ooh, chicken thighs, I think, do you mm. really want in a one pot? Because the thing is, you want things that will cook all the way through and won't get ruined. So, you know, if I've got something that's going to cook through a bit more slowly, um, like the vegetables, um, then I'm not, don't want to use chicken breast or something. I want to use something like chicken thighs. Sausages, sausages are very good in a one pot. Um, I use, oh, it depends. If it's a long, slow cook one pot, then, you know, anything really from, you know, beef shin through to I don't know cubes of pork or something yeah uh, I've been cooking lots of beans at the moment um just chucking a tin of beans into everything seems to make it go a bit further and it makes it feel a bit healthier and a bit more substantial um and rice we've been cooking a lot of rice in the oven like jalof rice we're really into at the moment so that's a nice easy one um yeah I love chicken thighs as well mints um cook a lot of mints in, in this house and like we were talking before about cooking a big batch of mints and then turning it into lots of different things we do that quite often so it's yeah a nice easy win and then you've got a couple of meals ready throughout the week um also I think one of my most commonly used ingredients in a hot in a, in a um one pot is stock cubes I rarely have fresh stock um so yeah a good stock cube is really vital I'd say for for one yeah. pots um one pot's only savory or desserts as well Ooh. well there's many one pot desserts aren't they yeah technically um and if anything with sort of you know marinated stewed fruit in it mm. you know i mean obviously if you're trying not to get do any washing up at all then you know you want to be making things in the same pot you're cooking in yeah um but you know one pot cooking you know you might have to make a bit of washing up on the way i'll, I'll concede to that yeah <laughs> um yeah so you could do all sorts of desserts couldn't you i mean you can use a bowl to mix up a kind of sponge mixture and then you can make a pineapple upside down cake or anything really. yeah exactly yeah i guess it depends what what your what your vessel is if we're talking strictly a pot rice pudding, then rice pudding is a good one yeah um a bit trickier but yeah not well, you can do one pot ice cream actually if you use the really easy um vanilla ice cream recipe couldn't you because you mix it all in um a plastic container and then just pop it in the freezer uh, yeah so you can use condensed milk and whipped cream and that makes a really nice no churn um ice cream and you can swirl whatever you want through that really to Gosh, flavor it i was going to make that the other day and i um I, I knew I had some condensed milk and I pulled it out of my cupboard. Oh, my God, Cassie, it was 2015. 
I'm sure I've probably got things older than that, you know. I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> I, sadly, it had gone brown. So, oh, no. Yeah. I, I couldn't make that. Recipe um, for an instant ice cream the other day, and I couldn't find condensed milk anywhere. It seems to have disappeared uh, from the shelves. Yeah. I think there was a bit of a run on it. Um, okay, it says, is there a way to make my pasta firmer? My Philistine daughter prefers dry pasta to fresh. Um, well, you just cook it for less time. Yeah. That's what you mean by firmer, yes. So usually on the pack, I find it's about two minutes too long. Yeah. Um, so I usually cut the, the cooking time by um, by two minutes. Yeah, and remember that... It, firmer. Pasta. Yeah. And remember it... it um, it's best to finish cooking your pasta in the sauce for most most pasta recipes. So if you're going to carry on cooking it for a little bit more time with the sauce, then you want it to still have a nice bite to it when you drain it from the water anyway. Um, can I cook all courses in a one pot? I guess that's similar to the <laughs> dessert question. <laughs> <I've answered> that. <laughs> that's the courses, well, <laughs> What you need all at once, all three courses at once. <laughs> if you had one of those tiered steamers where you put a different thing in each steamer basket, you might be able to do it. But otherwise, <laughs> mm, probably well, not. Section off your um, baking tray, have three sections on your baking tray. <laughs> I suppose you could because you could have baked potatoes at one end, and if you sectioned it off, you could have baked apples at the other end. Yes. Not sure about your starter. Ooh, <laughs> <yeah. tricky. laughs> And someone um, on Facebook is suggesting making the rice pudding in a slow cooker. Yes, you can do that. We have a recipe on the website for that. Um, you have to be careful with your, with your slow cooker as to how slow it actually gets because um, different um, types of or different brands of slow cooker have different sort of um, high and low temperatures on them. But, yes, you can do that. Yeah. And you can make that delicious, actually, Indian rice pudding as well, can't you, which needs a very long cooking time here. Yeah. Okay, what? good quick cooking veg to bake with chicken breast. Um, courgettes. I quite often put those in at the same time, or strips of pepper. Yeah. Um, they they work at roughly the same time. Yeah, and also, I mean, most veg can cook fairly quickly if you chop it up small enough. So if you wanted to do something like sweet potato and you just cut okay. it into quite small cubes, then that would cook in the same sort of time as a chicken breast. Um... What is your favourite one pot? Mmm, biryani. <laughs> oh, yeah, great one. I made that the other day, actually. I I sort of, well, it was a version of a biryani that kind of made up. Okay. Yeah, because you just layer everything up and leave it to cook. Mine's probably a ragu. Um, a nice, slow-cooked ragu, either with mince or like a nice um, piece of brisket chopped up or something like that, or I love sausage ragu as well. That's really nice through pasta. Um, yeah, and it's so versatile. Once you've made a ragu, you can turn it into all sorts of different things. So that's probably my favourite. I also like, I, I like beef bourguignon. Good beef in red wine is really good too. What are all your favourites? Everyone let us know your yeah. favourite one pots. Exactly. All right, what else have we got? What quick veggie meals can you make that have enough protein too? Well, you need some beans in there, don't you? Yeah. Or some tofu. Yeah. Or, you know, cheese. Beans, lentils, cheese. Um, even, I mean, lots of vegetables have plenty of protein as well. Like peas are full of protein. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, with some, um, or some nuts and seeds, things like that all, all up the protein. Um, something like a dal is really good because that's made... Um, with lentils that's got lots of protein in it um what else what's your favorite veggie one pot dal probably <laughs> i made mutter paneer I'm, I'm on an indian thing at the moment i made mutter paneer um because i had over ordered the milk substantially and we couldn't get any more into the fridge the freezer was full so i used two liters of milk to make um quite a nice big lump of paneer it's really easy to do you just heat the milk up to almost boiling and then add the juice of a lemon and you stir it and it separates into curds and whey and then you drain it and you just press the curds and it makes a sort of cheese like paneer um and then you can use that to make mutta paneer with um peas and onions and tomatoes that was really nice sounds great uh, can i put kaffir lime lime leaves with chicken in the oven or will the leaves burn too quickly 
Mm. Uh, they do. Yeah. They would tend to burn a bit, wouldn't they? A bit like what happens to bay leaves. Um, yeah. You could to... put them underneath the chicken, and then they yeah. flavour the chicken without burning. You could put the chicken yeah. on top of the leaves. Or, I mean, you could pound them up into some kind of, um, uh, like a paste and marinate the chicken with that. Um, but they're quite um, tough, the leaves, so they're better um, really finely chopped. Or if you cook them in a sauce, like with some coconut milk and a Thai curry, um, you, could do, you could do it that way. Someone's saying that their favourite is lamb shanks with pearl barley and veg. It's a good Ooh, one. Yeah. Great. Great. Fine. Lovely. Um, and someone else has boiled a chicken and wants a suggestion of what to do with the remaining stock, which they've frozen. Well, you know, you can use it for soup. I would use it to make ramen or something like that if you've got a good chicken stock, because it's really absolutely delicious if you've got um, a good, good, strongly flavoured stock. Yeah, or you can make a really nice Mexican chicken um, soup called uh, tortilla soup, where you... Mm. Um, shred the chicken, add it back to the stock with um, black beans, sweet corn, coriander, lime, um, and then you serve it with like crispy uh, tortilla on top. Have some um, pieces of like corn tortilla wraps and uh, serve that on top, and that's delicious. Someone said, "Can you make any interesting one pots with mints?" Well, yes, you, yes, you can. Yes, ragu, obviously. Um, <laughs> chili um or you could go yes yeah lots of things you can do with mince or you mm -hmm. can make meatballs with it and then make a a one pot with that yeah that's a really nice one uh or kofta we're getting this question a lot at the moment actually um but i think the best thing to do with mince is like we said make a batch and then if you keep it keep the flavors quite neutral you know tin of tomatoes onion garlic um maybe some celery and carrot if you've got some and then you can use that in lots of different ways. You can have it through yeah. pasta, you can make enchiladas or lasagna, um, add beans and a bit of chilli to it for a chilli. Uh, so, yeah, it's so versatile. It is. Um, I don't know what I'd do with that mince, really. <laughs> no. Do you, always, do you always use beef mince or do you use different types of mince? I use a, a kind of combination, actually. I quite often, and, um, when we're not in lockdown... I go to um, a, a butcher and um, it really depends on what he's got. Because sometimes if he's got veal mints, I'll use that yeah. in with beef mints. Um, I use pork mints for some things by making like Chinese dumplings or something like that. Um, sometimes I'll use chicken mints for the same thing. It, it kind of depends, really. Yeah, we use a lot of um, different types of mints as well. Not just, I think a lot of people always think of mints as being beef, but we use yeah. a lot of mints or turkey mints if you um can find turkey thigh mints specifically i think that's much nicer than the turkey breast mints a bit more fat and flavor um venison actually you can get minced venison venison and there's an amazing um chili recipe isn't there yeah venison mints it's got really good flavor yeah uh, what have we got oh someone said their grandson loves stovies made in one pot being from Scotland and they make them with sausage. Yes, stovies are really, really good. Mm. Um, someone wants recommendations for dishes with rhubarb that are not crumble or full. Uh, oh, rhubarb cake. cake. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. mm. It cooks so nicely in a cake. Um, we've got a really nice recipe online. I think it's a rhubarb crumble cake. Um, yeah. And you put the pieces of rhubarb into the cake uncooked and um, it's delicious. Nice I, also, I also like rhubarb cooked with ginger um, mm. and then eaten as a savoury, you know, as a side to um, to roast meat or or mm. um, something like that, because I think it makes a really nice sort of addition. Yeah, pork chops or some dark or something. That'd be lovely. Um, um, I think it as well, because it's so sharp and then you've got, and it's soft once it's stewed, and then you've got crisp, really sweet meringues. I think that's a really good combination. So pavlova or yeah um, ice cream yeah obviously got ice cream on the brain at the moment yeah. uh, <laughs> we've got jam with it rhubarb jam's lovely yeah got a lot of it then uh, yeah chutney yeah um Some, someone's got a glut of savoy cabbage so apart from coleslaw any summer cabbage ideas i like using cabbage as rolls I and mean, you know like a carrier a roll-up thing like yeah. a wrap 
yeah. There's um, what's the Polish recipe where you bake, oh, yeah. stuff them, and then you know arrange them in like a tomatoey sauce. My mum used to make a strange version of it <laughs> when we were younger and make like savoury rice and then stuff it into cabbage leaves and bake it in like a tomatoey sauce. That was really lovely. Um, yeah. And actually, if you've got whole cabbage and you slightly loosen the, the leaves away for, from each other, um, you can put the stuff a stuffing mixture, um, like you can do sausage meat or something, you can poke it in between the leaves and then kind of mould oh. the cabbage back up and, and, and cook it like that. I've had that before. That's quite... Oh, I've never heard of that. That's that quite good. an interesting way to do it. Um, you can have that kimchi. Yeah. you can, And also, Savoy cabbage makes really nice crisps in the oven. Oh, you know, a bit like kale crisps. Kale, yeah. yeah. You can do it with savoy cabbage. There's um, a recipe on the website for making vegetable crisps. And if you say, so yes, yeah, so if you did the did the cabbage like the, like the kale ones in there, that would work really well. Um, I just really like savoy cabbage. I, I just like it steamed with butter and black pepper. Oh, with bacon, bacon lardons, <laughs> and then chuck in yeah. the cabbage. I know, we're doing that. Okay. We're doing that thing again where we haven't had <laughs> I have had lunch. I've got no excuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how do you stop everything from going to mush? <laughs> in what? In a one That's, pot. Yeah. Uh, well, you have to. Is. Yeah, and also cooking it slowly because mm. quite often if you cook it too fast, so over a too high heat or in too high an oven, then that's that's when it really goes to mush. Um, mm. Yeah, if you cook it too fast. There's yeah. a query there's a query you can help with on here, which is, do you have tips for putting icing in piping bags? Putting icing in piping bags? Yep. So <laughs> um, if you put your piping bag in a glass or a, a small jug and then roll, already have the nozzle in, in place, and then just roll it back so it stands up and then you can pour the icing in easily. Yep. Good little hack. Um mm. In between talking about cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you icing? I want to know what you're making. <laughs> uh, okay. How do I decide whether to pressure cook a stew or slow cook in my multi-cooker? How does it affect the taste? Oh, uh, well, I would say that if you were... <sighs> pressure cooking has a much higher heat. So actually it makes the, the meat taste more meaty, I think, um, because you do get um, a sort of caramelisation um, that occurs, the Maillard effect, as it's known. Um, but if you put something in a slow cooker, it never gets up to a high heat. So it's a much more gentle way of cooking. So you tend not to get a stronger flavour out of a slow cooker. Yeah. Um, there are some cuts of meat that are quite dry, but still need long, slow cooking, like brisket. And I think they do better in a slow cooker than they do in a pressure cooker because I think the pressure cooker makes them drier. Yeah. So it sort of it sort of depends really um, what what the end result you want is. Um, so with the ragu, which we've been talking about, I quite often make that in a pressure cooker because I think it sort of um, it just gives it a sort of more heightened flavour. Mm -hmm. I think. And kind of everything just becomes a bit homogenous doesn't it and quite um soft and you you lose the like distinct different textures with a, a slow cooker I think if you cook it for a long time whereas yeah. a cooker you seem like you still seem to have a bit of texture to meat especially it seems to hold its shape a bit better but um, yeah tender. Okay, what else have we got? Cream carrot cake, yes. Uh, yes, I mean, if you put the cream, yeah, if you put the icing on, I have actually frozen carrot cake with the icing on, but it tends to get a bit, <laughs> it's, it's a bit runny when you defrost it, but yeah. it's still edible in a bowl with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ideally without the icing, but I think it's a really good cake to um, freeze, actually. Freezes quite well. Um, oh. So whoever asked about the stew, is a vegetarian ah okay was that the pressure cooker yeah with in which yeah in which case mm, pressure cooking vegetables yeah you just you just need to do it for such a short amount of time but i'd say the same thing was true actually yeah um 
that um, in a pressure cooker, you do tend to get a slightly more heightened flavour. And also, on this, in a slow cooker, if you're not careful, if it never gets hot enough, it, it actually takes, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily cook everything through at the same rate, does it? You have to be a bit careful. I don't know. I'm very wedded to my pressure cooker. I love my pressure cooker. Yeah, I like I like my pressure cooker, but I'm just um, I just can't be bothered to wait for things to cook for too long. So I like the fact that it speeds everything up. But I think yeah. the pressure cooker also um, it, it will retain the structure in things like vegetables and beans as well. Whereas in a slow cooker, they tend to break down. If you if you're making like a dal and you like that really soft texture, then a slow cooker is really good. But if you still like to have a a bit of bite to your lentils and a bit of texture then pressure cooker would be better i'd say yeah yeah i agree yeah. uses for fresh dill oh i love dill in rice salad mm. you know what any rice dish really it's got that sort of buttery taste to it hasn't it yeah fish so, is obviously the classic um so any fish dish you could throw some dill in um just steam some nice salmon fillets in a parcel with some dill butter lemon black pepper that would be really nice um and actually going back to the rice dish there's that that nice middle eastern combination isn't there if you put um, raisins and flaked almonds and dill um and olive oil into something you get that there's a nice kind of tomato um salad that um i had once which was it was just um chopped up fresh tomatoes and then it was dill dill that was mixed into yogurt and that had um some flaked almonds in it as well that was really nice I think dill is a really underused herb. Taste I, salad. Myself, I don't often use dill, um, but it's a really nice flavour, so should use more dill. Um, and the icing the ice person is made a Victoria sponge with jam oh, and buttercream. Lovely. Ideas for okra are my favourite. Oh, you can have this one. <laughs> oh, um, I like fried okra um, because it goes a bit sort of um, slimy if you um, cook it slowly or stew it or anything like that. But um, yeah, so I would just trim it and then I would fry it in a pan with a bit of turmeric, a bit of cumin or, you know, any kind of spices that you've got, maybe a bit of chilli until it sort of goes crisp around the edges. And that's my favourite way to eat it. Um, there's also you can um, halve it and then dip it in ground flour and kind of deep fry it as well and make sort of really nice frittery things like that. Um, you can or you can just um, tip it talking about one pan cooking. Sometimes I just tip it onto an oven tray and put some, um, again, some spices with it, some chilli or I like nigella with it and a bit of oil and then just roast it in the oven. Delicious. Someone I love okra. If you tried fried okra, you'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> love fried okra. <laughs> Um, oh, we always get this question. Any ideas for aubergine? <laughs> oh, so many ideas for aubergine. Okay, cooked aubergine this week, Cassie. Uh, I haven't actually. I've got one in my fridge, but I haven't cooked it this week. Have you? Yes, I have. So I um, halved mine, did a crisscross pattern in, into the flesh, brushed it with oil, put it in the oven, cooked it till it was nice and soft and then I scooped out the middle and mixed it with some lentils that I had left over and some tomato and some herbs and put it back in put some yogurt on top shoved it back in the oven did that with it because I like like stuffed aubergine yeah uh, yeah my favorite is aubergine parmigiana delicious just <laughs> can't get enough of it um but curry. Mm -hmm. yeah lovely um miso aubergine another favorite so again you know the easiest way to do that is just halve it brush it with miso roast it in the oven really yeah. really good with loads of things rice noodles etc etc or is another classic and so easy and delicious only needs a handful of ingredients and um, makes a really nice lunch um or you can keep it in the fridge and just snack on it throughout the week uh yes we are talking about aubergine <laughs> Someone said, I'm talking about everything. And someone said, in the US, we fry okra cornmeal. That sounds good. Yes. And someone yep. else said, pea flour. So I need, yeah. I need to make myself some um, okra fries, I think. Oh, okay. yeah. Actually, there's a recipe on the website, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good sure. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a little competition because we like, we like you to send in, um, you know, pictures of what you're making and, and, hashtag them with stay home get cooking but maybe we should you know issue a challenge for aubergine and okra recipes with stay home 
Yeah, we'll have a look at them. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be the one thing that people can get lots of at the moment is aubergine. <laughs> That's right. And if you're not on not, um, BBC Good Food um, Together Facebook group, then do join that because we have lots of chats on there about what everyone likes cooking. It's a bit of a baking vibe on there, but actually yeah. there's all kinds of things okay. as well. Yeah. Top five herbs, spices, seasonings should we all have in our cupboard? Well, well we this theory that everyone has an internal larder of things they really like. So it depends what you really like so Cassie what what five would you have so herbs and spices so in my spice drawer the five that I use the most are probably cumin uh, ground coriander um, turmeric uh, smoked paprika and probably garam masala yeah yeah um I use a lot of nigella Uh, and (laughs) garam masala turmeric i've got also earther chili which i really really like um because it's a sort of milder richer kind of chili mm. um what else do i use a lot of i just pens actually sometimes i use a lot of um um sashimi to- togarashi the japanese spice mm. oh i've just been reminded we've changed our hashtag haven't we it stays safe yeah it is yeah <laughs> still at home too um someone's got two pak choy in their veg box any ideas um i like stir fry pak choy really yeah lovely or um put it on top of a, a bowl of ramen some nice noodles topped with um some stir fried pak choy is really nice uh, hmm. someone's just said cumin coriander turmeric crushed chili and asafoetida asafoetida is a really good call hmm. i think that's um a really useful spice to have um, especially if you can't get hold of any garlic or onion or you can't eat them for any reason. Um, my daughter's been making potions all week with all of the ingredients in my spice drawer and tipped a whole pot of all over the floor and I can't get rid of the smell. <laughs> and was, it, was, it the, was it the stuff that's all, that's cut with flour or is it was it the really strong stuff? It was really, it really strong. Stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Every time I go in the kitchen, I get a waft of it and I can't get rid of the smell. <laughs> Yeah, very useful. Someone mm. said chili flakes. Yes, chili flakes also very. See, I don't think five is enough. Whoever no. asked the question, we need more than five. Yeah. Uh, we had a healthy snack one that's just whizzed past. Sticks is my healthy snack at the moment. I'm not not even sure that I'm actually probably eating too much hummus for it even to oh to count as a snack. And apparently today is hum- is hummus day. Oh really? Yeah, we're eating a lot of hummus as well actually. <laughs> Making a lot of this. Um, make, make. Um, also, just before we finish, to say that um, we're fundraising through baking, um, bake because you can, and you'll find all the details at bbcgoodfood.com slash donate if you would like to join us. That would be lovely. Well, we've only got two minutes left, so shall we answer a couple, another question each perhaps? Okay. What helps? These snacks would you make in quarantine? Oh, that's the hummus one. We've kind of done that. Um, oh, we had another one here. Oh, Choy. Oh, what's the best croissant recipe to follow? Uh, have we got a croissant recipe on the website? Hmm. I don't know. You see, the thing is, we're not making croissants at the moment. We're all making cinnamon rolls. Yes. <laughs> So well, we can, if we could deviate you to cinnamon, cinnamon rolls, we can definitely <laughs> help you. There's a really um, Liberty's made a very nice um, in the zone video showing you how to make them, and um, th- there's a recipe to go with that as well. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll move on to croissants next. There's yeah. something nice in rolling up a croissant, isn't there? Yeah, homemade. They're amazing. Um, is there anything hate the t- you hate the taste of, but eat because it's healthy? No. no. <laughs> That's a very good question, but no, no, no. No. Oh, so we've come to the end of another um, Q and A, but we're back every day at twelve thirty. So um, drop by and send. Um, like Lulu said, we've got a new Facebook group called BBC Good Food Together, where everyone's been sharing lots of lovely pictures of what they're cooking during lockdown. So if you haven't already checked that out, then have a look and join in the fun. Lovely to see you, Lulu. And you. See you soon. See you soon. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.